On this episode of NSFW Show, we are joined by Andrew Main. He of Don't Trust Andrew Main on the AE Network beginning this January. We discuss the launch of Night Attack Live, some strategies of what we're doing with Night Attack going forward, as well as a horrifyingly embarrassing old clip where Justin Young and Brian Brushwood have a really awkward interview. It's all coming up on this edition of NSFW Show. Glug, 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 glug. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 202, recorded on October 29th, 2013. Silly boy nonsense. This episode of NSFW Show is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, or online store. For a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use offer code NSFW10. And ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymous and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code NSFW. And hover.com. Hover is the reliable domain name registration and management service that's simple, honest, and easy to use. For exceptional customer support and 10% off your new domain name, go to hover.com slash NSFW and enter the offer code NSFW. W. I got me a yacht and it's as big as a whale and it'll never set sail. Hit it for the yacht, baby. I got me a yacht and it seems about 20, so hurry up and bring your Coast Guard money. When it's gone, it's a little bit We can get to the end. All right, start Something. the show, start the show. Yeah! <laughs> Hold on, wait, wait, I gotta hit the, I gotta hit the thing, I gotta do this thing, here we go! And that means that it has got to be go time for NSFW! That's right, the new show full of win, the new sauce for the webinars, the show that is nominally safe for work. Oh my god, beautiful party people! It's Brian Brushwood in Petaluma's auxiliary extension in Austin, Texas. Joined in Petaluma, the heart of the internet, by Justin Robert Young. What is going on, Professor J.R. Why? Brian, uh, it, this is a momentous day. It, 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 it is? It is. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. That's what I was just thinking, I mean, that it was a momentum. Listen, look, we're still dealing with the huge uh, release, and, and I don't even have to mention it. We've talked about it uh, so much. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe... That it's already been five days since Facebook.com slash Don't Trust Andrew Maine uh, first was launched. <laughs> All right, look. Celebrate De- De- Andrew De- Maine's brand Justin. new television show, Don't Trust Andrew we- Maine, coming in January we- We've 2014 talked about this. to the A&E you- Network. You never plug the guests before ourselves. This is why we're not as famous <laughs> as we should be. You- Yes, of course, Andrew Main is amazing. Yes, of course, his show on A&E is going to be incredible. Yes, we're privileged to have Andrew Main as our guest for tonight's episode. But that's not what you lead off with. You lead off with the fact that Night Attack Live just went live. And you can get it right now on iTunes, where it's currently the number one comedy album in the universe that matters to me. uh we are 67th, I believe, on iTunes full stop, which uh, is getting close to where we were with Night Attack 2. Enjoy the garden. But if you haven't downloaded it, it is uh, a full, what, two hours of us uh, talking at both uh, Nerdtacular and Dragon Con in Utah and Atlanta, respectively. I think it's the most ambitious thing comedy wise that we've that we've ever done because uh, it involves us interviewing characters and kind of doing uh, improv in that way. But. Go get it. Three ninety nine right now. Of course, the more you leave comments, the higher the higher you're rated. The more it uh, works on iTunes. But I'm super pumped about it. What do you think, Andrew Main? Uh 
I've already left a comment. It hasn't popped up yet. I bought it, and I was listening to some tracks before we got onto the show in case I got quizzed on it. I, I, <laughs> I jumped right in the middle into, into Fat Rick. I was talking about before the show. Absolutely love it. I think uh, you boys, you did it again. No, okay, let's talk about you know, Andrew, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's very um, gracious of you to say that, but I think everybody should go to Facebook.com slash and don't trust Andrew. Don't trust me around is, pies. Is that a prosthetic That's he's wearing, awesome. Brian? <laughs> How did he? Did you get into some latex before he did this? That's amazing. Uh, yes, no, he is a gifted and talented actor. Everyone knows that uh, that that Justin Robert Young is amazing. He's a chameleon. We used to call him the the cam chamomiles because that sounded kind of like the <laughs> word chameleon. Uh, all right, look, this is a weird big day because we we released on our end. Uh, this is this whole episode, man, is nothing but simultaneous release because we released. <laughs> and Attack I want Live. you to contemplate that on all possible levels, That's folks. It. Boom, like that. Uh, but but the and the fact that you have have, uh, oh, I mean, it's been all right. Let's let's pull back the curtain just a little bit, not all the way. Let's open the kimono. Yes, open Gosh. the kimono and show that we're made up all the way down to our panties. Uh, the uh, the fact that. It's been very difficult for us to keep any secrets from chat realm. And the fact that we yeah. haven't been able to do uh, uh, that, that we haven't been able to do uh, weird things the way we normally do, you know, for a while, me and Justin and, and Bonnie tried to cover. But at some point, we realized that without a proper dungeon master, we just weren't playing the same game anymore. Uh, it's it feels so good to be able to tell everyone that your quote on assignment that you were doing out in L.A. is, in fact, a huge ass series for a and e like what can you tell us because i still don't know what i'm able to say um <laughs> i had a conversation with the network to find out what the hell i could say <laughs> and uh you know having lived in secrecy for so long and but the good thing is i can actually talk about other projects that came before and before then uh, you know later on at some point and some of the fun adventures i've had with you guys and justin but Everything I can say about the show right now is on the Facebook page, Don't Trust Andrew Main, um, which basically there's the video, the promo that aired during Duck Dynasty, which, I mean, it feels just awesome to be able to say that, that the show got announced during, like, the season finale of Duck Dynasty. Uh, yeah, that's a thing that happened. Yeah, but the first commercial, there was the Duck Dynasty yeah. introduction, the opening credits, and then, boom, Andrew Main, you can see the promo. If you go to Facebook.com slash Don't Trust Andrew Main, <laughs> you can see the promo that aired right there on the A&E Network. And it was mind-blowing for me. I was I was jumping up and down uh, in my living room. Uh, yeah, no, uh, well, uh, I'll say, uh, so let's, let's talk about that promo that you shot. You knew that you would be doing something specifically for Duck Dynasty. And if you haven't seen it, uh, you know what? Here, let me actually go ahead and get this loaded. I'm going to go to Facebook. What's that URL again, Justin? Well, it'd be facebook.com slash don't trust Andrew Main. Go ahead and like that. Uh, you're going to get all of the new updates that come through. Uh, and believe you me, if you like that promo that aired, uh, there uh, hopefully will be kind of more from that as well as stuff from the show, which, uh, you know, is going to be here sooner rather than later. And, and everything that you get will be there first. All right, here, take a look at this promo. This is Andrew Main's face on the Duck Dynasty. Hey, Duck fans, I'm Andrew Main, and I like to mess with people. Check this out. You a Duck Dynasty fan? Yeah. I want you to blow into that duck call. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> They're yours now, so you need to take care of them. Don't trust Andrew May. A new series coming in January on A and E. All right, so here's here's what I love about that promo. First of all, I mean the fact it's good magic. Uh, the fact that you have a totally empty box and all of a sudden it's filled with quack and ducks or whatever. But but that looks it looked great. It looked like there were three hundred ducks in there. <laughs> you know, I mean, like who watches the ducklings? That's how good it looked. It looked I great. I don't know what that means. But but the but that whole it, it, what I love about it is that third beat, that weird denouement where where you're all like, uh, yeah, that was magic. And anyway, now you're faced with the reality of taking care of all these ducks. And you can see the fact that on her face, like like, well, that's not an, that's not how I thought this was gonna go. Uh what I'm excited about it again. We'll have more. Uh, we may have shot another promo that may appear there and some other stuff coming out. But 
Um, what I'm excited about the show is this, ex- this show exists for a reason and it wasn't to do what's been done before. It's to do something that hasn't been done before. And I think that that's, what's really fun about what we're going to be doing. And, and I, I don't like being so cagey, but like they haven't even released a press release about the show yet. They're so secretive about what it's going to be about and the full, what it means to the title. By the way, don't trust Andrew Maine. That's it's like a joke. Of course you can trust me. All right? It's it's, it's <laughs> TV. I mean, Never believe TV. Of course you trust Andrew Maine. Uh yeah. Uh, anyway, wait, let me let me put this out. I mean, this is something that has been been out there. The producers and Andrew's creative partners on this series are Joe and Biagio, whom you might remember as the folks who put together the zombie president episode of NSFW show when they were doing Scream Queens. They are huge supporters of NSFW show. They always have been. They they were our connection to Michael Rooker initially. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's amazing to me. I mean, this is very much, uh, you know, something that is that is of the Diamond Club. And well, I, I'll tell you what, it, you, you could not ask for the creative brain trust to come more from this community than Andrew working with Jogan Biagio. And it's the, the work has been amazing. Yeah, no, this is, and by the way, the chat room makes a good point. Who couldn't trust this man, <laughs> the debit daddy himself? I mean, again, the debit daddy <laughs> is being produced by the producers of Zombie President on A&E. Again, the biggest cable network there is with, with uh, you know, Duck Dynasty, which when it aired at the beginning of this summer was the biggest show on cable that Network is now Zombie President produces the Debit Daddy. Oh You're welcome. This <laughs> Iron Club. Boom. In fact, maybe we should send like a like a You're Welcome card to A and E. Like like yeah. like. Yes, we're glad we put this all together for you. Love Chat Realm. We would have we would have had uh, Joe and Biagio here tonight, but they had a prior engagement. So we'll, I think we'd be great to bring them on. I'd like to get Mary on here too. Who Mary's been part of this uh, process since. Oh my God! Can you imagine? First- okay, we, here's what we do. I'm just gonna put this out there. We get you, Mary, Joe and Biagio, in, all in the same room, and and we uh, have Chat Realm, you know, which clearly has a track record of nothing but success. We have Chat Realm plan out your next winning venture <laughs> to be produced right there live on NSFW show. <laughs> I, I like I like the sound of that. I couldn't ask for a better writer room. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's for damn sure, man. So, uh, uh, okay, yeah. so, so so where are you at? And and we covered a little bit of this on uh, on the Weird Things podcast, but I know a lot of folks haven't haven't heard it yet. Uh, one of the questions I asked you on Weird Things was. Who's come out of the the woodwork? Like, like all of a sudden, I mean, I would imagine, you know, it's like, like, look, yes, you're a superstar, but you're a man who grew up in some town and and went to some high school. And at some point, I would imagine people who had lost touch with you suddenly see you on Duck Dynasty uh, and, and reach out to you, man. Uh, if I was a more petty man... <laughs> Let's I might say have tried theoretically. An experiment. We're, we're drawing a wild scenario here. Yes. If, if I was, I, I might have tried an experiment where, uh, let's say, like a week or so before the promo was going to air, I may have sent friend requests to people from high school, people <laughs> I knew, who, who I'd never managed to connect on Facebook, and then to count the time and to see when those friend requests started to get accepted <laughs> and to see who didn't. And then to see, interesting. And in this hypothetical, completely theoretical scenario, uh, let's let's go on a trip, a theater of the mind, if you will. Uh, tell us tell us uh, how what, what observations might you have noticed in this scenario? I think that I think that usually when we get friend requests from people, who we haven't been in touch with for a long time that maybe some of the time we may think it's done out of desperation or something. They're trying to reconnect or something or, you know, like, Oh, they want to, they're, they're unhappy with their life. So they want to talk to me now or something. Yeah. You know, uh, wasn't the case. Not- <laughs> uh, I, I have a new family now. That's I have right. new friends now. It, 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 That's it, it, all it, I need. Invert, invert. You got to invert. His pads, pads. Well, touching. remember, I'm still getting over the xenon thing. That's, so. Okay. That's. <laughs> I forgot about the xenon club that was gonna that was gonna take down Diamond Club. Uh, dude, this has been an amazing journey. I think about the fact that um, I like like I, I and Justin, I want to kick this over to you because like we, uh, w- this all started. 
what, five years ago when you had to justify to your boss, Andrew Maine, why you were using his equipment in his office, in his warehouse to uh to to, what? to to do a side jag uh called the BB Live show. <laughs> and then and you had to be like, trust me, someday you'll be glad that I'm doing all of this. Well, I mean you listen, you're goes... working on a poetry album. <laughs> I mean, it goes beyond. I mean, listen, there's there's going to be a point where we can tell kind of the the long story, and hopefully uh, we can do that before uh, Don't Trust Andrew Main debuts. But I met Brian by way of the fact that I'm doing eye tricks, which starts because of Andrew. You know, I moved down to Florida because, uh, and now we can kind of tell this story a little bit more, but, like, the reason why I moved down to Florida and wasn't just working with Andrew from New York City where I was working and I was living in, in Jersey from remotely was because we were doing a, a, a pilot for another network. And that was oh so many years ago. And then, you know, I moved down there. We did eye tricks. We did so many other different things. I think Talking Head TV, there's an extraordinarily awkward interview, video interview with me and Brian oh back my before gosh. we were friends with Talking Head TV. And that was an idea that that Andrew had as a way to kind of showcase what, what I could do and his belief in me as an interviewer. So uh, there, I mean, like, there's nothing that has that I have done that didn't start with Andrew saying you should go ahead and do this because I think that you're a funny and compelling person up to and including this show here. Uh, like it's 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 uh it all it all starts with the man in the middle here. I'm trying right? to find somebody in the chat room is gonna have to find it. I'm doing a search for the Talking Head TV interview because it's so funny because you you uh, very clearly are putting on your professional airs. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I very clearly am very flattered to be interested or to be interviewed by the August. But you're Talking also Head yeah. TV. Number one, I'm incredibly <laughs> overeager, and you are like, yeah, this is uh just doing the press rounds <laughs> as one does. <laughs> That's okay. Somebody in the chat room needs to find this so I can throw that up on the screen. That is amazing. It's very awkward. By the way, we are right now with Night Attack Live at sixty-seven, uh, number sixty-nine. A little uh, artist, Jason Z, with Magni Magna Carta, Holy Grail. Jay Z at 69. We are at 67 right now. Dude, this is all happening live. By the way, uh, if I, I don't know if I already said it on the air. We talked about it, of course, incessantly in the um, in the pre-show leading up to it. But we released Night Attack Live, uh, and it we want everyone to go to iTunes first. But if uh, but once the price lowers, if you want to buy it again. You know, it's like our whole gig is to is to get everything to the lowest price we could possibly get it. Uh, oh my God, here it is. Let's yes. get this thing on Billboard again, guys. That was exciting. Uh, yes, it was. Not as exciting as this interview with Brian Brushwood of Revision Three oh, good explaining God. how to He's got the alfalfa haircut. <laughs> All right, here we go. You, let's let's do a video breakdown of this. Here we go. Well, here, Brian, you want to do it? Let's do an ad first. Okay, we'll go right, into that. All right. Can can you do an ad pretending to be this guy? Uh, no, that man is dead, as he should be. Brian, I'll tell you what, if I wanted to bury uh, my past, what I would do is not put my site on Squarespace. <laughs> now, wait, hold on. Why do you say that? Like, what's wrong with, with, uh, with uh, why, wh what, well, is Squarespace make really you a really unreliable Myrtle? website that would go down when traffic hit it, as opposed to the rock-solid uptime of Squarespace. I'd also want it to be ugly and unreadable, so people <laughs> would be repulsed by the very look of it, as opposed to the gorgeous designs that you can very easily put together on Squarespace. They're in consistently improving their platform so your website can look as current and awesome as anything else on the internet. They got beautiful designs, it's easy to use and inexpensive, starts at just $8 a month and includes a free domain if you sign up for a year. How about this? You wanna sell some stuff? Like I do. We're selling the album, Andrew's uh, gonna, you know, listen. Right, those Duck Dynasty people, they got a whole, a whole line of everything. Andrew Main, sure to follow. He's going to need a commerce-ready website, which is where he's going to get on Squarespace and get a powerful and flexible e-commerce solution integrated to work with every Squarespace template, allowing sales for physical and digital goods with a global reach. We ain't just talking provincial here, folks. <laughs> this stuff expands like the British Empire back in the day. That the sun true. never sets on Squarespace's <laughs> global reach economy. Its dominance over the time and space is legendary. 
Here's the deal. Start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code NSFW10. Get 10% off and show your support for NSFW. We thank Squarespace for their support of this show. And Squarespace, we remind you, is everything you need to create an exceptional website. I want everybody to at reply Squarespace right now with just a winky face. And that's yeah. it. Just to, and if, if they ask you what's that about, just be all like, oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> just say, like, oh, you just know. Just say, what it's yeah, about. girl, you know. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. There's no way this will backfire. Uh, much like this interview could not possibly have backfired. Uh, let me grab this right hey, now. Hey, everybody, and welcome. Our guest right now is the host of Revision 3 Scam School, God, which is available. Didn't we stop with the annoying, with like like the really embarrassing old footage of us with the 200th episode? <gasps> no, this is, I can think I, we just. Can I just say that when he would be doing this, I would be like in the other room, like doing working on a magic product or something like that and then just the the boom of the voice and then i knew if he was doing it in the outer office i would be trapped in the warehouse until <laughs> oh, it was done you could or i had to open up the door and it would sound like an earthquake so i'm like oh, yeah i hope this is a short one well and the and the and the plus also i i i think it's fair to um as you would expect from an office warehouse the office part is air conditioned the warehouse part not so much so if you're uh, Oh, go well, ahead. here, yes. Number one, no part is air conditioned in any kind of central air conditioning. Right. They have wall units. You have wall units that, in that particular warehouse, there was a kind of uh, a, a, a wall with a door, so you could get that part fairly cold. The area that I was in was the open part of the warehouse, which was near impossible to get cold, especially in a South Florida summer, which routinely gets up to like a buck five, a buck ten with humidity. Oh, my God. OK, so all right. So you're in the warehouse part right now as you're interviewing me for Talking Head TV. Yeah. And now mind you, for, for, the, for the people listening, my hair is gelled to the point where it looks like it's a jerry curl. It looks soaking wet. And the, and the reason for that is that it's so hot in that warehouse that anything else just frizzes out as if I have some sort of like Errol Flynn Afro puff <laughs> thing. Lest, lest anybody accuse me of not providing a proper safe environment, there was a standalone air conditioner back there. <laughs> there somewhere. was. That doesn't mean he actually got to use it. At any no, time. it made like a, a, a sound like hell. It was just loud. So it wouldn't work, yeah. but... It, there uh, was so, an air yeah, conditioner. No, you couldn't leave it on. And even if yeah. you did, you could leave it on all night and <laughs> you might affect a five degree change in how cold it was in the warehouse. And that would completely disappear around like noon when the sun rose high in the sky. What do you say? Can you answer any uh, allegations that jury curls are going to be your new after afternoon snack? Just play the goddamn video, <laughs> Brian. I'm sick of your nonsense. Or more importantly for this interview on iTunes, because he saw his podcast rocket up the charts by way of chicanery. We are speaking to Brian Brushwood, the uh, the icon himself. How you doing? <laughs> this is okay. This is this is. Yeah, I <laughs> I love the fact I love the fact that even though Andrew's on our show to promote his show it needs to be a good guest the very fact that Justin calls Brian Brushwood an icon causes off camera Andrew Maine to laugh and say the icon <laughs> Well number one I'm calling you that because you called yourself that because the point of this episode or this this interview was that you had uh, gotten everybody to subscribe to Scam School, so you were the lowercase yes. I, yes. capital C O N. You were the uh. the iTunes icon. <laughs> oh man, I didn't even realize you were making a pun with that, dude. No, I wasn't making a pun. I was repeating your, your pun. pun. <laughs> Icon. It was I scam is what we called it. No, you yes, but you were the icon. Oh man, I didn't even. I, how did I not even realize that? Uh, the the amazing part is <laughs> that ironically, lowercase ironically, <laughs> uh, we are we are five years, six years later, doing the exact same goddamn trick on our show so that we can get our uh, only we're playing a bigger scam now, trying to get our album to to number one on Billboard. Right. <laughs> I'm doing really good, Justin. How are you doing? Uh, you were doing <laughs> you really good. Awesome. Confident, cool. Number one, 
Look at this interview and then compare it to any of the press junket stuff with a Shia LaBeouf or, you know, whatever, <laughs> Channing Tatum. Uh, I'm doing good, Justin. How are you? <laughs> like, neither of us know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> And by the way, people are pointing out that I'm so white that I'm lost in the background of the white wall behind me. Uh, the uh, Also, uh, the good news is, look how far we've come. Like, look at that shot. Look at those two people there. And look where we are today. It's clear that we've really gone. <laughs> it's been a long road. <laughs> <laughs> Changing absolutely nothing, <laughs> but for six years. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> uh, the one thing I was really proud about, Andrew set up a really great template thing, and uh, all of this is live switched by me while it was happening. Yeah, and this is uh, six years before uh, Wirecast 5, which I just got today. <laughs> And the music to, to switch this I episode. basically figured, like, if I was working at a zoo and I had a, a kind of a smart parrot, <laughs> so I made a little keypad, a little keypad, with little colored keys to go press here to go to this shot, blink, press here blink, to go blink. to that. Which is why periodically I'll actually break a Brazil nut in the middle of an interview and then munch <laughs> on the rinds. So you just shout pretty bird. Okay, so. Yeah, pretty yeah, bird. Pretty right, bird. Fantastic. Well, here's what I got to know. Where <laughs> listen, did this? Listen, listen to the, like, the, Jesus, Brian. This is like, I don't even know you and you already screwed up. This. Listen to the the mild contempt behind. All right, fantastic. All right, fantastic. Well, here's what I got to know. <laughs> I want I want to sound now, there. Go ahead. Here, and this is, this is actual, like advice for anybody who wants to talk in front of people and have it be recorded. Yes. The, the biggest part of the flight time element of that is understanding what to do in dead spaces. That is 90% of it. That's what changes. That's what separates somebody who sounds like they haven't done it a lot from somebody who sounds like they have done it a lot. And that right there is an example of somebody who has no idea what to do with a dead space. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> it's good to be here. Also, let me actually just point uh, two things about you. Go back to that screen oh, for those man. of the audio Damn listeners. It, I wanted so Brian's, bad to do this whole bit where I just kept letting dead air happen. But all right, fine. We'll go. We'll Brian's back over. face is blending in <laughs> with his white chimney, which is behind him. He is so blown out in this stream that he is, he is powder white. And also, you can chart, if ever you are to look at a random single frame of footage <laughs> of Brian Brushwood over the last six years. Sure. You will be able to date it on the length and size of his spikes. Yes. That now he is, he is without the spikes. We are at present day. And what you are seeing now are the spikes. And if not full plumage, the fullest they were at any point in our friendship. I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. And by the way, I, 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 I'm not going to go on defense. Screw you. I had spikes and I, <laughs> and I loved it. This is what I got to know. Where did this idea come from? Where did the eye scan? Give me the, the beginnings, the hatchings of these ideas. Uh, look, look at me. I'm like a girl who just got asked to prom. <laughs> I'm just all giddy. I'm like, oh, look at me. I'm being interviewed. I'm on talking at TV. <laughs> We had a uh, we had a uh, uh, live dignation event uh, in New York City at Studio B. It's good. I need to have more us. I need to. Uh, <laughs> I need to. Um, uh, 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 What's uh, on your uh, ear? Um, I think that's that's the my microphone. That's one of those in ear like uh, operators Gamer standing type. by ones. Although that is my that is my sweet ass mame cabinet in the background in Brooklyn and I knew that I would be performing for a Look at this. I'm literally I clearly have not thought about the fact that we're going to do an interview and you will ask me questions. <laughs> 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 like I, this is clearly the first time I've ever thought like oh I should think these things out and be able to say it. Thousand of the most connected people out there. These are fans of Dig, these are fans of Dignation and I was thinking there's just got to be something I can do with this, some way to corral that energy and then I had the idea Actually, I don't know if you remember, but uh, when when Ron Paul was running for Ron Paul, <laughs> drink <laughs> president, they would schedule these money bombs, and they would all at once send uh, send in a hundred dollars at the exact same time, and then make the news because he generated six million dollars in a day or something like that. And I exactly. Thought, I wonder if you could game iTunes 
the exact same way. So we hatched Operation Ice Scam, a coordinated plan. To Wait, what do you ice mean that you didn't know that you were going to talk about this? This is like a monologue that you've thought of a million <laughs> times in your head. Uh, maybe. Actually, that part, you could tell that I clearly thought like that part out of it, but we hadn't. I hadn't considered the transition to get from here to there. This is, as you pointed out, man, this is the difference between people who know what the hell they're doing in camera and those who hadn't, which, by the way, was my entire reason for wanting to do the BB Live show, which begat NSFW, which begat, you know, everything that's been awesome for us since then, was I wanted a safe place to be terrible so that it could finally become good. Uh, for the record, who knows? Who would have ever guessed that the... Sevens of people who watched that <laughs> interview, including the three of us here and Bonnie, which is really just the four of us watching it over and over again. Yes. Uh, would have at this point in 2013, the 63rd highest album on iTunes at the point of this recording and climbing. We are only three away from Yeezus. That's amazing, man. Uh, wait, we're three away from Yeezus? We're about to take over Yeezus? If we can overtake 60, if we can crack uh, the 50s here, we overtake Yeezus. I want to point out that in the chat room, Crash Kincaid uh, just said, wow, Scam School Brian really does look so much less fat and gay every day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Crash. I, I, I very flattered and by I'll, that. I'll tell you what, if we do, if we do pass Yeezus, I have... The cell phone number of somebody who is on tour with Kanye West right now. I can I can tweet, I can text somebody who is within earshot of Kanye West that we have a better selling album than him on okay. iTunes right now. Okay. Look. I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll get him from the other the other side too. I'll uh, DM him too. I have to, no yeah. idea. I have no idea. So somebody next to Kanye understands what's going on. Okay, no, this is great. So now it's not just about pumping up our ego. It's about deflating Kanye's ego. So that's well, hey, why. Listen, Kanye has wow. a. Yeah, he's got a long track record of handling things really well. <laughs> <laughs> really understanding the big picture. It's good. Yeah, no, I totally see that. Uh, now, if we could get back to something relevant like this interview <laughs> from six years ago. <laughs> and I, I believe this is the first time. Is this the first time we saw each other face to face? Was 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 this because this was pre, this was yeah pre Halloween Horror Nights. This is the first time we saw each other's face. Uh, yeah, this is the first time we gazed upon each other. <laughs> and I smugly told you about Ron Paul. At exactly the same moment, so that for one hilarious <laughs> second we could be at the top of the charts. Well, here's what I gotta ask you. Uh, you know. How much, especially with a crowd like that? That's a that great way. Someone... I'll tell you what, everybody, uh, you know, that journalism degree from the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications was really great. To start a sentence with what I want to ask you <laughs> before <laughs> the question in an interview. It's great. I always want to clarify that I'm going to be asking questions here <laughs> yeah, during people, this people interview. People don't like it when you, that's that gotcha journalism, when you ask questions without warning that you want to ask <laughs> questions. I feel like it's important to have full disclosure that what you want to ask is about to, about to be occurring. Uh, Brian, uh, real quick, I don't want to break in on this, but since our album is ahead of Paul McCartney's new album, oh. I was wondering if maybe we could we could get in. Uh, a real quick comment from Paul mm. McCartney cuz he, he's on our album too. Yeah, I don't know no, if you, no if you we, we did. We 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 got we got a uh, a special appearance by Paul McCartney. Let me let me see if he's if he's here. Hold on. This is uh... Oh, oh, soldering to do. Look at this. It's oh, such a such a oh, pleasure so to good. be on the NSFW show. Now, now, do you realize that uh, that your uh, your bit on our album is now outpacing your own album of music on iTunes? Oh, it's because my album is so, so compromised. <laughs> All my music, even the music All, I put out now. Even now, yeah. Now that the Beatles are are gone. Sure. Uh, memory almost full was about a vagina that was almost full of of, of, of man organs. Inappropriate, Paul. We're gonna cut you off there. Let's go back to the interview. Okay.
<laughs> I'm blind because I took off my glasses. I wanted you to believe it was actually Paul McCartney, so I made sure to take off my glasses so I look like a different person. It's a good move. <laughs> it's a good move. Excited. Obviously, Revision 3 is huge with podcasts, so they have to have some insight into how to put that stuff together. Uh, how much do you actually know in terms of gaming stuff? Well, I mean, because it, it is kind of voodoo, right? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 very little, actually. It was mainly kind of a... How much do you know about gaming stuff? And what are the odds that six years from now, you and I will be doing exactly the same trick? Oh, my God. It's actually so boring. I want to fall asleep on our own show six years later. It's like, it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's like we, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, what's funny is we'll feel the same way about this exact episode in in. 13 more years. No, I don't think we will. I think Theory, we might think that we're better like then than we were now, but that's embarrassing. When I What's happening when, there is actually embarrassing. Uh, are you done with it? Do you just want, here, I'm going to pick, I'm going to play roulette. I, I don't think we need to go. I mean, listen, it's a boring interview. There's, Everybody can watch one, it and laugh at there's us. There's one more moment, and I don't know what it is, but I definitely just slid the what bar. A serial killer far. stare by me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> now, Brian, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> With my stare. Yeah. But instead, day after day after day, it's it's been staying up there. We're still in the top 100 of all possible. Oh, screw you. <laughs> this, is, this is a mirror that I'm uncomfortable holding up to ourselves. I'm done with it. Screw that interview. Screw you, Justin. I'm embarrassed that we ever did this. All right. I'll tell you what. Andrew, go ahead. Well, I just say, like, yeah, you know, a, and a part of that, too, before, you know, Justin and I got into the podcasting stuff, Everything we did, we would we would do. We'd record like iTrix, like new stuff, and then we'd listen to it. And then I would make us throw it away <laughs> and do it over and over again. We um, did what five, four or five iTrix Magic Weekend reviews before we actually published uh, the the first one. Yeah, there and, and those are. Been, I mean, like, like you think that is? I mean, like that's embarrassing to watch. Now, our, the uh, stuff that Andrew's talking about, that's like radioactive, very under concrete embarrassing. That's terrifying. But that's, uh, I, I mean, that's something that I firmly believe is important. It's, uh, you mm -hmm. cannot get good without being bad. And I, and I think that's the, that's the right attitude. And, and the right feedback is important. I mean, what you guys have done is bouncing off of each other over these years. It's just funnier and funnier stuff. You start in a good space, which is the way your chemistry works, and it gets better. And everything I've done of value in this world has been from collaboration. And, you know, I used to think of myself as this one man kind of doing everything. I realized all the really good stuff came with working with other people from, you know, the stuff I've done with Justin and to the show. And so and seeing you guys... It's it's healthy to look back there. Can can I tell you like like legit ass secret um, <clears throat> that that your and 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 this is not going to be funny or or possibly even interesting, but but my interaction with you and Justin Andrew has fundamentally changed my view of the world and in a extraordinarily positive way because uh, the way most people get into magic is. You know, you, you build up your show, right? So you build your robot and you walk out into the world and you hope to, you know, be a badass with your show. And in that moment, you're doing content and, and you, you're constantly terrified that you're out of your depth and you constantly wonder if you're not right for this gig and et cetera, et cetera. But you're trying to make a living doing it. And uh, I think that culture of fear permeates through magicians in general, which is why... Man, when I was in early 2000s, did I ever love to take a big old dump on David Blaine or Chris Angel or David Copperfield or, you know, whoever was above me. Was... Or whoever was debuting on A&E this January. <laughs> and you can find more information on at Facebook.com slash Don't Trust Andrew Maine. I mean, I mean, but but it was like you you guys, the two of you, and I don't know which one of you is responsible for all that positive energy. But one of you was like, yeah, hey, here's the deal. When somebody you know gets higher than you. That's rad because that means you now have a friend in a position that's higher than you who can help you. Like, wouldn't it be like the Rat Pack worked because the the rising tide floated all those boats, right? Uh, you know, the the best piece of advice I ever got about that came from Justin, and and it, and it sits with me to this day. And I tell other people, and in, in in my project, which I'll be able to talk a little later on, the level of cooperation I got from other people in the community is fantastic. But, the, you know, what Justin said once years ago, when we first started working together was 
talent doesn't fear talent. And if you know what you do and you like what you do and you're good at what you do, then you don't fear what other people are doing. You don't wish for them to fail. Yeah, well, because otherwise you're stuck in that scarcity mentality. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. success in, in any art is not a zero-sum game. And um, uh, I don't know. And, and this is this is not uh, – people are like, where's this bit going? And it's like it's not a bit. I just I just feel the need to put out to the universe that uh, that you guys over the last five years have really instilled in me that it's okay – for it to wish everyone success and that other people's success is not threatening to you. And I think that's pretty rad. Well, yeah. I'll tell you, it, it's, it's a necessary mindset if you plan on being successful. Because, yeah. like, that whole hating on people that are successful thing, it ain't a real good look when you're the one who's successful. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, when everybody's yelling at you and saying, boo, you stink because you've done something good. Like, you better hope that on the way up you were like, hey, it's really rad that other people have done good. Because when you've done good... You hope other people are like, yay, you. Yes. Uh, all right. How about this? What? This very serious interlude is brought to you by Pro XPN because that's a very serious topic. It's a serious business. You want to know what they do? They give you complete online privacy with a 512-bit encryption tunnel. Works via OpenVPN or PPTP. They don't make you choose. They say, you you go ahead. You make any decision you want. They're not going to They're gonna say, we dictate it. No. You choose. That's what happens. Protect yourself against ISP6 strikes rule. Uh, here's the deal. There are no VPN that works with almost any internet connection, creating a secure encrypted tunnel through which all of your online data passes back and forth. Any online application can work with ProXPN, including your web browser, email, file sharing, and instant messaging programs. ProXPN keeps everything you do online hidden from prying eyes or private eyes. They're watching you, according to Holland Oates. Not when you got Pro XPN. Then we record that song now. It'd be private eyes are watching you if you don't have Pro XPN. In fact, there we go. That's their new jingle. ProXPN.com slash twit. You can get more information and sign up. Pro XPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month. or $74.95 for the entire year. But punch that deal right in the face. Because we got a better one for you. Use the code NSFW, receive 20% off the lifetime of your account. That's less than five bucks a month on the yearly plan. If you're not satisfied, cancel within seven days for a full refund. Go to <laughs> proxpn.com slash twit. Sign up uh, with the code NSFW. We thank ProXPN for their support of NSFW. That's right, right here on uh, Serious Business with <laughs> Brian Bushwood and Justin Robert Young. I was going to ask, I was going to throw down a challenge of, of some of a hundred bucks that Justin could actually explain what all those acronyms meant, but I was a little bit distracted by the latest update from iTunes. I'm sorry, what's, uh, wait, do we have special, oh! wait, what? 58, Brian, we are one ahead of Yeezus. Dude, one? Two ahead, sorry. Two ahead, two ahead? Did yep, we, we are 58. Jesus is 61. I am taking a picture. There. I just clicked the Inception button. Uh, I'm, I'm hesitant to, to show my kids the Inception button because I don't know what will happen once Penny knows that she can click on it. <laughs> Let me actually make sure that there's no, like, deluxe version of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> ahead of us. No, I love it looks like uh... this is this is our version of fact checking. Is like no, seriously. I want to make sure that like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna put my butt right on his face, then he needs to know that there's nothing above me. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to. There is a friend of of uh, Andrew and I's who. Uh, Can you give a hint as to who this is? Because it's really messing me up. I mean, uh, I think he's talked announced. publicly. What's that? He's talked publicly on Twitter that he's on tour. Yeah. With him. Is it a magician? So, yeah. Uh, Dan White. Dan White, who did a, a show for Discovery, right? Yeah, no. Dan yeah. White, uh, I, I believe, did uh, The Supernaturalist with a, uh, an outfit called Ping Pong Productions and uh, made a show for uh, Discovery that did very well. Got like 1.6 million views. So Dan White is currently on tour with Kanye West. Uh, on the Yeezus tour. So he's performing he, uh, like on stage? What's he doing? Uh, he is a consultant. Uh, I think he's uh, just working with the general stage production and, and doing uh, a few magic effects 
here you know, and got, there. Uh, but uh, by the way, to... uh, people probably recognize if you didn't see him on the Supernaturalist, uh, which was awesome. He also is in those HP ads uh, with uh, where, he's, where yes. he's doing the 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 restored you know pair bit and other stuff. Um, and he's also he listen. This dude is is a brilliant magic mind. He worked with David Blaine on I know for sure his last special. And I think maybe uh, the one before that as well. He's worked with David Copperfield. He is uh, a dude who absolutely is uh, is he, at the top of his game. He's also and a dude right who now, I have uh, I have his contact information, so I could text him as well. So what <laughs> what what are we sending him a picture of? Do I need to go to, to I'm, iTunes? I'm take, I took a picture, and actually I'm going to take a better one. Uh, I'm going to do a screen grab. The current iTunes rankings, and I just want I'm going to text him and say, just let your boss know. That I'm ahead of him on iTunes right now. Okay, that's good. I'll do that. I'll do that as well. I'm going to let's see. I'm looking at the charts right now. I'm going to go to see all that songs. I'm going to go to albums, uh, see all. I'm going to scroll down, 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 down to the mid 50s, <laughs> where where our album is, and take a screen capture here in. What are we at? Oh, Night Attack Live, son of a bitch. There it is. Three slots above Yeezus. Boom. Yeah, all right, done and done. I'm going to send this over now. This is great radio we're doing right now, by the way. <laughs> I know. Three we've, people text somebody that nobody else knows. We've come, we've come a long way <laughs> from that self-congratulatory. I actually take that back. In six years, we are going to think this is terrible. <laughs> People are saying, do not tweet at Kanye West, whatever you do. Like, don't don't tweet at Kanye West. Uh, um, Kanye might not. I'll tell you what, though. I feel like there are some bands that are, are around where we are that there are people that are watching those Twitter accounts probably fairly closely. Oh, you like, I don't it, know who the neighborhood is, but I feel like someone uh, from the neighborhood is watching their Twitter. Uh, all right. So here, I'm gonna I'm gonna set it over to uh, Justin. Take control of the show for a moment for me, please. Wait, why? I'm also typing. <laughs> what, it's since when do you get to call? Uh, you take over the show, like to Andrew. You, you take you head over. on over to Facebook.com. Don't trust Andrew Bain. <laughs> click like. It'll help a lot. It's a way to keep track of the show. Networks pay attention to that. The more likes I can get going into the show is just a great way to, you know, help promote. And the right. more that we do. Uh, l l these kind let of me things. just the more we promote, you know, internally our stuff, the more we can take over media. It's not about me. It's not about me, Andrew Maine at Andrew Maine on Twitter or Andrew Maine of Annie's. Don't trust Andrew Maine. It's about the community. <laughs> I mean, keep going. You're and doing great. <laughs> Facebook.com slash don't trust Andrew Maine. Just click like if you can. Um, all right. That's all. That's all I have to say about that. All um, right. And say, you forget, there it is. Definitely. Don't trust Andrew oh, Maine. Oh There'll God. be more information coming up. We'll be right there. <laughs> Do that. I don't. And uh, just so you don't think it's totally self serving, I mean, I'm going like, to throw out my Twitter again. <laughs> I do have some marketing <laughs> ideas for Night Attack Live, by the way. I have some legitimate ideas that I will share with you guys later on if you want. Okay, so no, I, have I do. I, I do want to hear this. Now would be the time, time to do it. Uh, I just actually, uh, and again, I also want to point out that I'm not like I, I I've hung out with Dan. We are I would say on friendly terms. We we tried to set up a lunch when he was in Oakland, uh, but I have never just like like <laughs> bragged to Dan White about anything in my life. And I just had an unsolicited like if anything, my relationship with Dan White has been that of journalist for iTrix to subject. Of uh, so the, in the other industry words, for which in other I'm words, covering. Imagine that we have the Justin Robert Young that's in Talking Head TV uh, just all of a sudden, <laughs> halfway through the interview, with a starry eyed Brian Brushwood, drops all pretense and just starts <laughs> bragging in his face about how he got an album higher than his boss. I, I sent my text out to you guys just so. Uh, wait, wait, you sent it to us too? I show, uh, yeah, t uh, t nice about you. All right. Oh, fuck, whatever. Uh, yeah. I just, I just, uh, all right, let me show you guys real quick. I, I tried to tell Dan White, I tried to let him off the hook. And so it's like, I was like, I, I sent him a photo, a screen grab and it says, huh, look at those iTunes rankings. And then I'm just now trying to host a show and send it. I'm like, 
totally doing a bit where we're talking nice. So ab. ab. Oh, look at that. It blows up. We're talking nice abs here. Ab talk on the Twit Network. This week in abs. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dan White. All right, whatever. Uh, uh, look, what are your ideas? Hey, listen, it's NSFW202. Dan White, why don't you get our mass text? You're in our context. <laughs> That's true. Why did I get your mass brag? You got some nice abs. <laughs> what, all right, what are your ideas, <laughs> Andrew? You know, I... I been thinking about a lot of ideas, and if you want to give me feedback on the ideas, you can go to facebook.com slash don't trust and <laughs> post there. That's just one way. All right. uh, I don't actually control that website, but that's actually owned by A&E. In fact, I'm owned by A&E now, too, so really, what doesn't make a difference. I was thinking like... Uh, I was thinking of like a catchy slogan, because I've had... You know, I've been thinking a lot about marketing and stuff. Um... And I don't want you thinking that, like, I just totally last minute made these things up right before the show came on. Uh, no. Okay, look. Uh, first of all, uh, I think I think whatever you're about to go into, I think, is it completely right. And I want you to know that it appears that the chat realm is thinking about the exact same thing, which is why they're live creating a doc called Don't Trust Chat Realm, Advice for Today's Career-Minded Magician. And the first item here is uh, should Andrew Main follow Chat Realm's trustworthy, awesome, and all-around great advice? And your options are yes, no, and Pol Pot. <laughs> what do, what well, do you choose? I mean, I'm not going to go with the evil Cambodian genocidal dictator. Yeah. Uh, and I think I should trust their advice. What so, could go right, wrong? Let's vote yes. Uh, survey says... <laughs> That, I'll tell you what, Andrew, <laughs> looks neck and neck, man. Uh, we have 51% for yes, 47% for Pol Pot. What a shocking upset. <laughs> no is getting slaughtered. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, but you were saying you had advice for us, though. So um, I thought of a slogan, and uh, again, this has put a lot of thought into this. Okay, a lot of thought into this. Uh, it's... Uh, Buy night attack or crabs will eat your balls. <laughs> it's good. Uh, you 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 want to record some quick promos here, Justin? Uh, all right. <clears throat> uh, I need uh, somebody somebody find me on YouTube or some kind of like sounder like that kind well, of thing. Actually, do you want do you want to record it maybe in some of the character voices that we do on sure, sure. Uh, okay. on, on right. night attack that's, live? That's great. So so which character? Uh, let me see that 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 catch again. Uh, or that, that that catchphrase? What it, what was it, uh, Andrew? Uh, buy, the, buy night attack live, or crabs will eat your balls. Uh, that seems to me, crabs being a nautical animal, seems like the kind of thing maybe Captain Morgan would say. Okay. Uh, so so Brian, do you want to lead me in, and then I'll come in as Captain Morgan? Sure. <clears throat> Here with life advice, it's Captain Morgan. Oh, hey, Brian, <laughs> you need to buy a night attack live. Oh, crabs will eat your balls. And I don't mean those that swim in the ocean. I mean those that you catch from sassy ladies who don't mind their track I was, record. I was, conf I was confused, Captain Morgan, because I didn't know which balls swam in the oceans. Which I one? meant the crabs. You <laughs> gotta it? shave them down, Brian. <laughs> you How do you shave a crab, Captain Morgan? You don't sh you shave your balls. Keep it straight. No, when you say my balls, you mean my testicles. No, I mean ballast balls that you <laughs> bounce in the ocean. Ballast balls bouncing in the ocean was what we were going to call this. Bleh, crabs. And then we're done. It's great. It's money in the bank. What else you got? Uh, I got... Uh... I'm sorry, I was captivated there. Um, <laughs> this is this you is like persuasion. So this is a little bit of a threat, okay? And not right. a threat, but like, listen, you don't want crabs eating your balls. And I didn't say what kind of crabs either, because that lets people go in different directions with that. Sure. It could either sure. be like the the sassy lady crabs, as Justin described, or it could be literally crabs, which would just yeah. be horrific. Picking and like you know, the big they got the big claw and the little claw. The big one or the little one, it's not going to matter. You don't want either one of those. Do you, do you see? Is that that Fiat commercial? Like the ladies drive in the Fiat from like Italy to America and they get out and they're like rubbing their butts. It's like, oh, and there's like a crab in there. 
I just like think about I, like I what all that damage stop, stop, a crab stop, stop, can stop, actually stop, stop. do. I dare you to make less sense, Justin. You just said there was a Fiat Someone, commercial. No, I swear to God, this commercial played like eighty times during football this weekend. What? There are people that have seen this and know right, exactly right. what I'm talking about. The promise that I just got from Justin Robert Young is that there's a Fiat commercial where ladies drive a Fiat across Europe. Europe, they get out, they now, rub under their the butts. ocean. They drive from Italy. To America <laughs> under the ocean, rub- and then they get out and they're rubbing their butts, but their butts look great because they're models. And then they look back and it's a crab going like, "Ah, my crab!" Right? <laughs> what? All right, here we go. This is uh, our and beautiful. Introducing the Fiat 500L, <laughs> big enough for four passengers, or even five. There's no crabs in their butts. No, the crab's the there. He's Fiat pinching the butts, and they're rubbing their butts because the crab done pinched it. Okay. I'm just saying. Can I, a crab right, can do re- some real damage. Real, real quick, can I can I confess something, Justin? I was really hoping there existed some kind of commercial for a major automobile in which sexy ladies were rubbing their butts and crabs like physically came out like they were pooping crabs. <laughs> onto the beach <laughs> and as i thought about it i'm like there's no way this is possible but there was a weird childlike part of me that was like you could hope and that totally i did and i apologize well before we get to andrew's next piece of advice let's pause to recognize hover for sponsoring nsfw dude hover is great because they make domain registration simple that's what's great about hover Hover believes that everyone should be able to take control of their online identity with their own domain name, and they make it easy to do. So here's the thing. Hover also offers Google Apps. You want to know what a Google App is? How about this? Basically, you get everything you love about this full suite of Google's productivity apps like Gmail, Calendar, Drive, Docs, the whole package. They can be added to a new domain or one you already own. People already love and trust Google Apps for Gmail's 25 gigabit or gigabyte storage and how easy it is to collaborate with chatting and file sharing. Google's a huge company, so they can be hard to get a hold of for your questions, comments, and support needs. But that's the best part because you get everything you love about Google Apps and the outstanding customer support of Hover. Best in the industry. They make it easy as usual. Hover's all about honesty. They keep it real. If you think about Hover, think about this. Justin, Justin, tell me, tell me, tell me it says they keep it real on the ad promo. Tell me, tell me in the ad copy it says they I'm keep not it even real. kidding you. It says Hover keeps it real. Yes! I love you, Hover! You guys do Hover keep it real. Hover offers, uh, only offers services that enhance the domain name experience. Not some nonsense, silly boy nonsense, okay? <laughs> all right? Hover keeps it real. <laughs> Hover offers choice. Hover. You want to know what that, that part of the ad read was? Me thinking about something to say and then wondering whether or not it was offensive and then deciding to go with silly boy nonsense. Hover. Not some nonsense, silly boy nonsense. <laughs> Justin Robert Young. Hover is here to help for the long haul. You got a problem, call 1-866-731-6556, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You'll be speaking to a live person. How about that? And Hover's part of Two Cows, a company that's been around since 1994, and one that's the largest domain name registrars in the world. To register your domain name, use offer code NSFW, get 10% off. That's Hover.com slash NSFW. We thank Hover for their support of N. S F dubs. I'll tell you what, man. I feel like maybe we should pair Hover with our friend Tomcat and get him to write a version of Stop the Lies and Realize that it's time to keep it real with Hover. With the with the silly boy nonsense. <laughs> yeah, it out. Stop the silly boy nonsense. Uh all right. I'm not gonna say that we have to use this in our next promo. I'm just saying this is here right now. <laughs> And then we say it, right? Just saying that's I was just throwing that out there. Andrew, what's your next piece of advice? You know, actually, it's not a piece of advice. It's a slogan. How about this one? Uh, Night Attack Live is outselling Arctic Monkeys right now. 
Uh oh. <laughs> right on. All right. How uh, about that, Britos? I'll tell you what. Put that I'll in your pipe. All right, Justin. Why don't you? Seventeen seventy six will rise again. <laughs> uh, let's 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 uh, yeah, hit hit it again and and just see how it feels. All right, I'm gonna lead you in and get ready. Get ready. Here it comes, Justin. Seventeen seventy six, Pierce. It's all documented. NSFW Live will beat the Arctic Monkeys. It was decided at the Build-A-Bear Conference with the Teddy Grahams and Teddy Ruxpin. Also Teddy Pendergrass and Teddy Long, the manager from WCW. Infowars.com. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's music. It's I, good. I, I want to see you take down Lord. She's just a few albums ahead of you. Take that little New Zealander down. She's a teenager. Yeah. She's got to learn a lesson. Tell me, you what, we, we might never be royals, but we want to be ahead of her on iTunes in your face, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> All right, this is great. So far, nothing but gold. This is, this is great right. advice. What else you got for us, buddy? So it's a kind of a complicated idea. And uh, I was watching the Ken Burns documentary about the Great Dust Bowl. Um, and if you want to watch, watch old people sit around complaining about dust <laughs> and is, is how it wins, is? this is for you. It's really uh, a lot of that. I saw a free uh, – in, in Ken Burns style, he has these photographs, and the photographs go by, and you see, like, you know, Oklahoma, like, wasteland and that. And something caught my eye. I'm like, did I just see that? And I froze it on Netflix. And I had to go do a Google search. And I found it was a corporate logo that was so iconic, that was so iconic. And you think of like one of the most, the, one of the biggest, the, it was a, a corporate logo used back then. And it ended up being one of the most iconic symbols ever. But nobody's using it now for a logo anymore. Is it, is it the Pegasus wow. from mobile? Nope, nope. It was uh, bigger, bigger than that. And I, I looked up the history of this logo, seen where it's been used in other places, and um, I want to see if I can. Uh, it was it was used by a coal company, um, and I thought, man, hey, what? you that, know, that's a backbone of America, coal. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, way way to go, NSFW, shilling for corporate America, <laughs> pro right, coal look, agenda. Right, you can't you can't cast aspersions. It was an old time uh, industry, you know. Clean sure. coal is a so big part of they're, today's they're economy. Not, they're not using it anymore, guys. You could use this. You could take this. This logo, okay? okay. It's legit. All right, Andrew's what, offering what, what us it, an man? iconic logo right off the rack. Huge yeah. visibility. So, uh, it was named for, uh, I think, a town in New Mexico. And I'm going to send this over to you. You guys can uh, can go look this one up. Just click on that. Just open it up, and you'll see some of the, the matchbooks and some of the other things they used yeah, with all it. Right, all right. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type in. Uh... <laughs> Wait, what do you, what do you, uh, did you send it to us via email? He, he sent it to us on Skype, um, <clears throat> and uh, I'm, I'm doing an image search for what he sent for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're saying this is a totally unused logo for coal yeah. fuel. Yeah, the second image that comes up is a th is a thermometer. Yeah, yeah, no, that's um. All right, Justin, uh, what do you think, buddy? Maybe the new <laughs> the new logo. So uh, for everybody listening, it looks like as if uh, wow. Ah! It looks as though we're seeing live in real time uh, Andrew Bain being an asshole <laughs> to, to the two of us. No, no, no. He's, uh, I, I'm having a hard time describing this logo. Uh, it looks like an old time uh, ancient symbol for peace and good fortune. <laughs> yeah. It Maybe. is a Buddhist symbol. Yeah, yeah. Um... So also uh, what Hitler's pajamas looked like. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So this is your, your suggestion, of course, is that since the copyright has elapsed on this, that we could pick it up and make it our own, huh? It's available. Um, and if you do history on it, you'll find that the, uh, the town in New Mexico, I can't remember the name of it. Um, Brian, what was that? Uh, the, the town in New Mexico? The name of the company. Las Cruces? Uh, no, no, no. The other, the other one. Uh, I actually don't know. It's I'm seeing. No, it's the name of the symbol, Brian. Oh, swastika. Fine. <laughs> yes. Uh, apparently, in use there. Funny, I, I saw a, a Coca I saw a bottle opener, a Coca Cola bottle opener with a swastika too, which 
Yeah. All right. Same. How do you think that you know the people who spent all the money on branding felt when all of a sudden Hitler broke onto the scene? All right. Now, oh, help dude, us out that here. will ruin a morning. You yeah. are done for the day when Hitler breaks out with that one. Help, help us out here, Andrew. I'm gonna play the. Can the you bumper. imagine? Here, wait, hold on. Wait, pause, Brian. Can you imagine that? Like that is nothing but an annoyance from day one. As soon as Hitler starts using it, you're like, oh, can you believe this German guy, this German party is using <laughs> our logo? And it's just, it just kind of benign. And it's like, oh, God, it just keeps getting worse. Like, it's like every day you get a newspaper. It's like, what? He's doing what now? <laughs> That's amazing. He's just murdering people? How are we going to sell coal? All right. Do us a favor. Uh, I'm going to play the sounder, Andrew. I want you to give us an idea of what this as a promo might sound like. So, all right. Here. Hitler never bought Night Attack, so don't be a Hitler. <laughs> there we it's go. Good. It's good. See? Smooth like butter, sir. Well done. Hey, by the way, I just want to let everybody know that Dan White has responded to none of us. Uh, actually, he responded to me. And Oh, uh, he did? What did he say? Uh, let's see. He said, <clears throat> uh, and it's like, of course, I'm filled with... The, uh, in typical Dan White fashion, he totally ruined the comedy of our bit by being, like, gracious and awesome. He say he says I said uh, hey look at those totally doing a bit where we're talking nice ab and he's like that's awesome congrats and I'm like well crap hopefully you'll get more than five reviews soon <laughs> <laughs> oh damn it and now live just now he sent me another one of well wishes like he's just being the nicest guy on the planet god damn it Dan White way to screw up our bit Dan pretty much Wait, hold is on. nice again how planet. many reviews does Jesus have uh. Oh, I don't know. We can out-review him. We can out-review Jesus? Because that is something we do very well. Yeah, man. Uh, we do reviews extraordinarily well. I forgot all about the reviews angle on this, and I kind of want to immediately start reading reviews because the reviews are always the best thing that people make. So. Uh, Andrew, do you have any other uh, piece of advice? Again, Andrew, who is already, he's over the wall. He's got an A&E show debuting uh, in January of 2014. Don't trust Andrew Maine. Facebook.com slash don't trust Andrew Maine. Andrew Maine is where you go for all of the new updates on his show. What other advice, oh sage and wise one, do you have for our fledgling comedy album empire? Um, that's it, guys. Sorry. Good enough for me, bro. Um, talent doesn't fear talent. Hey, that's good. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. I was trying to think of what the, um, uh, dang it. Uh, and I can't remember if it was the R.L. Stein bit or the, uh, Captain Morgan bit where you're all like, uh, you know, players got to hate or, ah, uh, damn it. I can't remember. There's some. Oh, no. In Captain Morgan, he says <laughs> something that I can't repeat. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's, that's the problem. The I couldn't stream. remember yeah. whether or not it was filthy. Or so it says players don't, like, like today, Brian, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, uh, Uber, you could request in, in New York and San Francisco that they would come to wherever you requested and you could uh, pet kitties. Wait, for reals? For real, that happened today. Uber, uh, for 20 bucks, they would come by, they'd bring you cake, and you they had a big box of, of kittens. So uh, as Captain Morgan says on Night Attack Live, right. that players don't, don't pay, pay for kittens. For, for that service, yeah. No, they don't yeah. play. They, they don't pay for, for people players, to bring them. Right. Players don't pay for kittens <laughs> on Uber. <laughs> That's pretty much what he said. Uh, all right, somebody give me a link to the movie draft minute because we got to find out how I'm getting trounced and how nothing I ever do will ever amount to anything. Uh, I go. Somebody just put in the chat room. Stalling out at number fifty six. No, we have been <laughs> steadily climbing to number fifty six. <laughs> We just hit 56 like seconds ago. All right. So some of the advice people are giving you, Andrew, and, and you, you could take these uh, or or not, but it's don't trust chat realm advice. Never tip. It's a sign of weakness. I'll tell you what here. Uh, uh, Brian, say this because they're, they're coming back in like a month. I feel like this is something that we can build right up until then. Everybody can add their 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 thoughts on, on <laughs> advice for Andrew. It's, it's a pretty good bit, though, like. 
promise things to poor children. I know, which is why we should save it okay, instead of right. ramming it into the final five minutes of this episode. Fair enough, sir. Fine, let's take a look at the movie draft minute and how I'm losing. And for the week of October 28th, 2013, I'm your host, Roberto Viegas. It's almost Halloween. Night Attack Live is finally out. And of course, we have two more movies. Let's go check out the scores. Padre SJ is in sixth place, still waiting for his first film. Brian Brush is in fifth place at $29.5 million. Justin Robert Young's in fourth place with Bad Grandpa bringing in $32 million. Tom Ayer's in third place with $36.4 million. Jeff Kanata's in second place with a counselor bringing in $7.8 million, bringing his total to $77.7 million. And in first place with $206.9 million, it's Casey McKinnon. And that is your movie draft minute for the week of October 28th, 2013. All right, look, I don't want to. You know I loves me some bits of 404. Bad grandpa knocking out gravity. Look, you know I loves me some bits of 404, but don't think I didn't notice that he said Padre SJ is in last place because he has literally no movies whatsoever. Slightly ahead of last place with two of his movies out is yep. Brian Brushwood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'm screwed. I got nothing. Plus, I lost one of my movies. It got moved into the spring. Yeah, we got to figure out. So you get you get a compensatory movie, right? Yeah. You, you know what? I get screwed in the butt is what I get. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> that's well, that's well, the have, movie have, I want. You have 12 Years a Slave. Uh, yeah, well, which is out and so far has generated $2 million, uh, give or take. Hey, that's a lot. You're like, I'd like $2 million. Wouldn't you like $2 million? <laughs> uh, yeah, so the big moves were um, Jack Ryan got moved off of our slate. And uh, what else got moved off? Yeah, uh, 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 the um, uh, the Faces one. I, all I could think of was like... Um, oh, Monument Men. There you go. The, the George Clooney Monument Men movie. That got moved off. So both the owners of those two movies get compensatory picks. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street, which was rumored to be moved out of the winter, did get moved, but got moved to Christmas. So it stays in this draft. And at a prime location as well, man. Freaking Christmas is going to do movies in a big, big way. I don't know if it's family movie, though. Like, no, no, it's no. there for, for Oscar consideration, but I don't know if it's going to do business on, on Christmas. I don't know if, like, hey, Grandpa, let's go see uh, Leonardo DiCaprio scamming capitalism in Wolf of Wall Street. Hold on. We'll see, though. Hold we on. We will see. Hold on. What are you holding on? What are you holding? There. Okay. Sorry. I had to, I had to repair something. Somebody uh, gave me some helpful criticism, and I gave... So you guys want to do picks? Uh, <laughs> I guess so, man. It's kind of the... Um, uh, I kind of do want to do picks. Do you have anything that you're excited about? No, we're not doing That was a joke, Brian. That was a one-note joke. Mm, All right. Well, then, I apologize for putting another note out there. (laughs) (laughs) Only one note. Uh, Look, man, uh, this this was a good time. And uh, if we sound a little bit distracted and overblown and freaked out, it's only because we're distracted, overblown, and freaked out. Also, uh, I looked hideous back in the day, and Justin was an awesome interviewer. That's not, in fact, true. Uh, Andrew, where can people find more of you? More of me. Well, you could go to, for starters, Don't Trust Andrew Main, the Facebook page. You could follow me, at Andrew Main, on the Twitter. It's good. It's uh, visual aids. You could just go to Facebook.com slash Andrew Main to follow me on Facebook. But uh, Twitter, um... You know, I'm, I'm pretty active on the Twitter. Uh, I love you people on Twitter. It's easy to talk to. But, yeah, again, if you guys could go like the Facebook.com slash Don't Trust Andrew Main, though, it'd be great. It'd be, like, super helpful. It'd be, like, the more likes, you know, people will look at that and they'll go, like, oh, look, they were going to judge the show before anybody gets a chance to see it by how many likes we have. <laughs> Good. Good. By the way, uh, uh, yeah, no, Chat Realm, support a show again. The zombie president producers are uh, giving the debit the debit daddy a A and E show. Please go support it. Facebook.com slash don't trust Andrew Maine. And the straw poll results are in, Brian. What are we looking at? Pol Pot with 55%. Congratulations, Pol Pot. Do me a favor, asshole. Dying a fire. See you next Tuesday. 
Night Attack Live available now on iTunes. Buy it now. Or don't. Watch the throw. Oh, no. It's already gone. Buy, uh, you can buy it on, on Amazon, too. That'd be all right. Suck it, Jesus. Yeah. Dan White, you jerk. Have you heard the R.L. Stein interview, Andrew? No, I wanted, I, that's a, of the three things I said to take down from the cloud and to have ready to listen to, that's one of them. Dude, uh, what's up so, with that? And, and by the way, for anybody who's listening right now, uh, if you download it off iTunes or Amazon, really, uh, for whatever reason, that track got screwed up on between here and there. So we are giving that away for free. Right, schwood.com yep. slash night attack. Yep, 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 yep. I believe the links are there at nsfwshow.com slash album as well. So you can you can get that track for free. Uh, it How will much? be repaired on iClouds. What was that? How much did you say that was? Free. Zero dollars. Oh, free. Okay, so where do I send the PayPal money to? No, How much is this again? No, no, no PayPal. You're about to get some. In fact, I'll play it right now. It's free. Square? It's free. Free. No. Some important no, people. No, square. Okay, hold free. on. Ladies and gentlemen. It is a rare and distinguished honor to have truly one of the great literary legends of our time. I'll say this. I think this actually might be my favorite track in the entire thing. And, I, and I'm going to give it away for free. Yeah, for free, for free, for free. Uh, and, I'm, I, and in fact, I'm going to leave the camera on us because I want to see Andrew react to it. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> if you read anything of import published between 1991 and 1998... <laughs> And you probably read one of the works by uh, famed Goosebumps author, ladies and gentlemen, R.L. Stein. Hello, hello. It's me, I'm R.L. Stein. Uh, uh, R.L. Stein, now, wait, yes. what's R.L. Start? Do, do people call you R.L.? Uh, no, many of my friends just call me money. <laughs> wait, 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 what should I call I you? I don't have a lot of friends, that's a joke. <laughs> I live alone, Brian. Well, I, know, I, know, I hear about this. You have a palatial estate. I do. And, and I assume all this money came from Goosebumps. Uh, many uh, Goosebumps and uh, many of my other works. Uh, wait, you had other works? Yes, Brian. Honestly, as a review, I, I believe you should be embarrassed by not doing your research. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I only I've written you... many works. Uh, before or after Goosebumps? Both. Oh, well, uh, well let's go back. To, like, what's the, your latest book? My latest book is called Dead Dead. <laughs> Dead, dead, dead. Now, how's that? Like D E A dead twice. So the word dead, D E A D. No, it's just called dead twice. <laughs> but, with but, the word twice. Wait, but you say, wait, dead, dead twice? No, it's called you say it dead, dead, but it's spelled dead, comma, twice. <laughs> that, 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 that seems like a challenging thing to do. Viral have... marketing, it's huge with the kids. <laughs> it seems like it was out of heart. The hard kids sell. love it. Wait, I know what the kids want. Well, I mean, clearly, you're the author of this book. Stein. Now, take me through de Dead Dead twice. You say it twice. I'm trying to get the title. You know right. you're embarrassing yourself <laughs> I, right I, now. I, 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 sorry. I've made my way all the way down here we're, yeah, we're, to give this very rare interview. Okay, you're right. So walk us Normally through. Normally, I live alone. Yes. Wait, wait, uh, okay. Take us through Dead Dead. Dead Dead is a, uh, a novel. It takes place, uh, a man is named Reggie. <laughs> he dies. Later in the book, yeah. he dies again. <laughs> so, so he comes back to life. No. <laughs> wait, wait, how can you die and then die again? The twist is, two different Reggies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, so wait, you don't realize- I spoiled it for everybody, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm R.L. Stein, but... I live alone. Okay, so... <laughs> So let's, let's take it all the way back to the beginning. When did you know you wanted to be an author? Uh, when I could spell. And how, how old was that? Four. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, and and you're, uh, did you start writing then? Yes. <laughs> what did you write? I wrote many books. You, you wrote books at the age of four? From the age of four to seven, I wrote 17 novels. Uh, oh my God. Okay, what was your first novel? Dead. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about? It was about a, a boy named Reggie. <laughs> He died. <laughs> That's the whole book. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, then what? Because you find out he has a twin named Reggie. <laughs> Who doesn't die? It sounds very familiar to your latest book. 
I draw inspiration. Okay, I, I understand. So, so, so you, you started writing these books. Uh, what were some of the other famous titles? From, did they get published? Uh, no, no. Uh, from the ages of uh, uh, 7 to 17, I wrote over 400 novels. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. did, and did any of those get published? No. <laughs> it, what, were, what were some of the titles? Slime. And, and that was about... Slime. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, it was about a man named Slime. He died. <laughs> okay. And that and, was it. And, and any, other, any other memorable works? Well, of course. I mean, uh, it was right around then that I began uh, to formulate the thoughts for the Goosebumps series. Oh. Any Goosebumps fans in the house? In the house. I'm hip with the kids. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've studied the children. So what was it? From what my was... estate. <laughs> From... I have a telescope. <laughs> okay. I watch them. Yes. Do, do you learn a lot? Oftentimes, um, it's a comical telescope that stretches uh, hilariously from the edge of my estate uh, to my hot tub. Wait, so you sit in your hot tub? I do. And watch children with your telescope? Well, that's not all I do before you mischaracterize it. I'm sorry. I'm also naked. <laughs> sorry. I drink port. Yes. And smoke poorly rolled blunts. <laughs> that's, that's quite a lifestyle. I've never learned how to roll a blunt, Brian. How many years have you been trying? Fourteen. <laughs> so, what Before was... Before that, I just smoked out of a pipe. Stein gotta get high. <laughs> so... <laughs> so, at some point, you come out of your prolific 400 novel phase, and yes. lightning strikes, and you have the inspiration for Goosebumps. Yes. How did that happen? Well, I was getting out of my hot tub one day. <laughs> Did you already had a hot tub? Uh, yeah, this was not in my estate, of course. You were at someone else's estate? Uh, no, I, uh, I, I was on a golf course. They had and, a hot tub in the club area. And, and were you a member? No. But, and so you were, you were trespassing? It gave me the idea of my first Goosebumps novel. Oh, really? What was it? Yes. Golf course breaker in her. <laughs> And it, was it was about a young boy okay. who broke into a golf course. It did what? And then was haunted by a ghost called Reggie. <laughs> how, did, how did that one do? Did you, did it, was it immediately published? Scrapped. <laughs> oh, you threw it out. The, I went to the publisher and they said, this is a great title. We can make a, <laughs> a mint on this. But this Reggie thing is weird. <laughs> So I scrapped it. And, and what did and you do? Brian, yes? I've regretted it ever since. Oh, okay. so you're still chasing that Reggie uh, dream. Which is why I have now have an announcement. Oh, do you? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is exciting news. R.L. Stein is about to make an exclusive announcement right here in Utah. My name is R.L. Stein. I live alone. <laughs> I'd like to announce that the Reggie Chronicles will be published this fall. <laughs> did it seemed like there's a bit of a hesitation. Maybe, maybe people are unfamiliar with what's so great about the Reggie Chronicles. I've been writing about Reggie for over 40 years, <laughs> yes. Brian. He dies a lot. Many times. <laughs> yes, all right. Other times he lives. And his cousin Only dies. to die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, when... Later, in another book. Okay. So... I don't want to give away the ending. But Reggie fans better be wary. <laughs> How many books are going to be in the Reggie Chronicles? Thirteen. And, and, and it begins with? Today. Is the first book. I'm writing it as we speak. <laughs> now, that's amazing. You're on stage. We're talking. You're, you're taking mental notes. This is creepy. <laughs> sorry, I was a paragraph ended. Okay, sorry. All right. So, so, you're already, so it's not written yet. You just have it sketched out. I write it in my mind. And then when I retire to my hot tub... Smoke your blunt. I put... Calm down. <laughs> I pour myself a nice glass of port. Yes. I swirl it around. And I just whisper to myself, as I exhale, the ragged tearings of my poorly rolled blunt. <laughs> and I say, Reggie, what adventures do you hold for me today? I guess we'll find out this and fall. And I encourage everyone to do the same. My, my name is R.L. Stein. Ladies and gentlemen, R.L. Stein.
I'm well, very high right now. <laughs> That would be a great title for a new book. I'm ve Reggie says, I'm very high right now. Uh, I would like to point out that R.L. Stein did an AMA and uh, definitely was told, I'm R.L. Stein and it's my job to terrify kids. Ask me anything. And uh, I'm R.L. Stein. I terrify kids. <laughs> Ask me anything. Uh, and he says, please, I don't want to live in any of my books. Spare me. And Shiftlock Zero says, you live alone. You're R.L. Stein. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any chance R.L. Stein actually read Stein's those Stein's on Twitter. And it would <laughs> please me greatly. Give him that if track. everybody tweeted him, Stein got to get high. No, 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 no. Uh, give him the link. Schwood.com slash uh, night attack. Schwood.com slash night attack and uh, or or tweet him the exact link. I I think hang on let me Schwood.com slash night attack. Like if you look at it, you can see there there's that that's the link. So whatever it is I just played, uh, you know, copy <laughs> oh. link address. Apparently somebody Expect in there says that like to do show up. Reviews. Wait, what's that? We Sorry. show up when you Google RL Stein. <laughs> no way. Although that might that might be just for somebody, just like the personal results. This is R L S T E I N, guys. <laughs> totally different R L. Totally Stein. different. <laughs> Man. Nope. I typed in a attack under R L Stein's name, and it went to. Well, somebody will uh, click on the picture that people are putting in the. Go to images. Chat there. No shit. Dang! 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 Dang it! Oh! oh, what, what, somebody just cursed live on Twitch for the first time ever, that's why we have a whole bit around this, uh, <clears throat> I'm looking at images, I don't see anything, see can I tell you how amusing it is that how, a bit like that becomes so automatic. Oh my God, there it is. <laughs> you just go into it and out of it without a hesitation. Oh my God. Uh, R.L. Stein, are you live on the phone? Uh, it's me, Brian. I'm R.L. Stein. I live alone. I'm calling you to... from my hot tub. I hope uh, the bubbles aren't uh, overtaking my no, voice. No, no, no. We, we, we hear you well. Uh, we actually have you paired with uh, uh, the, the, the famous magician. <laughs> I'm sorry. Andrew I was Maine. exhaling the blunt that I'd rolled right. poorly. Right. Are, 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 you, are you a fan of magic, R.L. Stein? I love uh, magic has factored into over 70,000 books I've written. Okay, so we actually have uh, the new star of A&E's show, Don't Trust Andrew Maine. He's available right now, and we have him on the line. Andrew, are you there, sir? Yeah, I'm here. I would like some video proof, though, that this is R.L. Stein. Like, maybe could you put a photo up? In Google Images that says, I am R.L. Stein. Uh, hang on. Uh, I believe I have that here for you right now. I'm putting it on screen. Oh, wait. There it is right there. I okay, am R.L. Stein. Okay, I can't actually see the man I'm talking to on the phone, but that sounds a lot like that guy right yes, there. Yes, exactly. So if the, there he is. It says, I am R.L. Stein. What questions do you have? Now, Andrew, No, go ahead. Bring up... Uh... Bring up my actual image. Okay, all right. Th th this is an amazing moment because you realize that we have uh, two authors encountering each other for the first time. We have uh, Andrew Main, of course, with the breakaway hit, Angel Killer Chronicles, uh, uh, or, or uh, story, uh, wait, I've series? read many of his novels. I find them fascinating. Wait, well, oh, so, so you're a fan. R.L. Stein, it's, you're a fan uh, of Andrew No, Main. I am. I'm a uh, game-recognized game. <laughs> All right. As they say. Yeah, no, and, 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 and so uh, I'll tell you what, Andrew, uh, this is an amazing occasion. You have the opportunity to ask one of your heroes, I assume. Uh, Very uh, uh, gracious <laughs> that Andrew Maynard finds me a hero. Are there any other Goosebumps fans? <laughs> Go ahead and tweet out hashtag Goosebumps. <laughs> yes, okay, so, so, so as somebody who, you know, certainly wants to emulate, if nothing else, the success of R.L. Stein. What do you want to ask him, Andrew? You know, in, in his book, I think it was Night of the Living Dummy. I, I yes. thought that... What was that? 
Mr. Stein? I said yes, as in to acknowledge your question. Um, what motivated you to write a horror story about a dummy? I was fascinated by actual dummies, and by that I don't mean the wood uh, creatures, but rather stupid people. And I imagined if ignoramuses around the world were instead characterized by wooden figurines. They would maraud around and terrify children as they do in our society. And uh, I wrote that book. <clears throat> also, I got paid. <laughs> okay, so, so, so you're saying like, like you were fascinated by stupid people. Sorry, I'm applying my mole. <laughs> you're applying your mole. Great, RL. I, I'm very Sorry, curious. Yeah, what is your comes writing all technique? The time that I spend too much time in the hot tub. It's all better now. Keep going. You're doing great. What? What else? What other questions do you have, Andrew? Well, I, I'd like to know. Is you know, I'm still learning. You know, the best place and the way to write. Could you describe to us your actual writing process? What do you do when you sit down to write? Very glad you asked. The way I write is quite simple. Number one, I hide under a stairwell so as I am to understand the mind of a frightened child. I then hire two Portuguese immigrants to bang pots and pans consistently for over four hours while I write the first draft. Each first draft consists of 500 pages. Many of those over 400 are gibberish, and me just being terrified. One time, in a Goosebumps novel, hello. <laughs> Any Goosebumps fans I once, in the audience? I once, yeah. Don't go for the cheap pop, Brian. It's the meaning. I once wrote over 400 pages and just said, please stop clapping. Obrigado. <laughs> Obrigado is uh, Spanish for... It's Portuguese, Portuguese, you racist. <laughs> All right, that too. What is it? I'm R.L. Stein. I understand cultural differences. I live alone, and I'm very high. Yes. Uh, uh, so, 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 so how did that go? You had this, this book filled with uh, essentially... I have gibber. every book. That's how I write all of my books. <laughs> At which point, the 500 pages are then whittled down to over 40 pages. I then... Write another 40 in the same factor. I combine all of them, regardless of whether or not the plot connects, and then ask somebody to draw a silly picture of a haunted stairwell. Now, has, has that ever not worked for you? Because uh, No one's I noticed yet. <laughs> Andrew, do you have any other questions for R.L. Stein? I'd love to hear him describe some of his peers. For instance, uh, Stephen King. I mean, oh, he yeah. writes for grown-ups, but how would you describe him? Stephen King, you ask me to describe Stephen King. Well, if I were to do it in one word, I would say this, elephantine. <laughs> and I don't mean that in terms of how large of a presence he has in the fiction writing community, but rather in many of the stories I have of the author get-togethers we all have. Me, Stephen King, and Amy Tan, <laughs> were once very high on methamphetamines. Okay. Stephen had gone to a Chinese restaurant and only ordered egg rolls. He put all of them down his pants and asked Amy, would you like to join my Joy Luck Club? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so Joy Luck Club was a metaphor. Well, anyway, he was trying to get her to grab his penis. <laughs> At which point he pulled, he said, don't worry, I'll spill my mahjong tiles for you right now, and yanked it out. Oh, 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 it's so sweet. Elephantine, Brian and Andrew, huge. <laughs> now, when you say elephantine, uh, oh, oh, you're, you're talking about his, his manhood. I would say that if Stanley Kubrick were to shoot it, he would use a steady cam shot that would last over 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> as he as he slowly panned back. All right, uh, slowly. That now you mentioned Amy Tan, of course, of the Joy Luck Club. Uh, yes. Uh, what what what's she like? A real bitch. 
Don't like her. You don't like her. It's 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 no. It's it's odd to hear you speak so ill of another author. Oh, the author Amy Tan. <laughs> She's great. I meant some other bitch I know named Amy Tan as well. I'm sorry, A Andrew. Do you I have got any other confused. Questions? I'm very high, Brian. I I would love to know what advice you have for aspiring writers out there. Aspiring writers, I do believe. Number one, you should go buy my Goosebumps novels and read all of them and write a book report. May you say on each one. You, you you say write a book, but but clearly a I, book I, report. <laughs> a book report. A little self-serving, but okay. Space. <laughs> okay. And so, what, what what do you think of people who list you as an inspiration? People who list me as an inspiration. Number sure. one, you have to ask, what list? <laughs> Is it lists of inspirations on athletics? Because I'm quite an athlete. Are you? Wait, I wait, wait, no. Yeah, that, that's quite a claim to make. You, you say you're an athlete? I'm a discus thrower. <laughs> you throw the discus? I How sit on my, top of my estate alone where I live. I, I climb out of my hot tub naked. I then hurl... Discs into the street for other people to pick up. <laughs> so you don't pick up your own discus? No, I don't leave my home. Now, are, are I you live alone? I'm R.L. Stein. Are you familiar with the work of that hot young erotic fiction superseller, Patricia Harkins Bradley? She's a bitch. <laughs> really? Oh, did you meet her? Wait, who'd you say? <laughs> Patricia Harkins Bradley. Sorry, I was thinking of Amy Tan. <laughs> You have, I have tan on the brain. Tan brain, I call it. Okay. Uh, all right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, R.L. Stone, it's been a real pleasure. I'm glad you, you visited us. I uh, live alone. I'm R.L. Stein. <laughs> all right, take care. Who's got a nickel bag for Steiny? Stein got to get high. <laughs> end, the, end the stream. <laughs> For me, I'm so and glad. I'm leaving. I'm so glad. Just go switch there. to another shot. All right, there, there, there. There's this other shot. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, R.L. Stein. That's he's an amazing piece of work, and I've oh never been happier that I left. <laughs> oh, sorry, everybody. I have a chocolate all over my face. <laughs> Is that what that was? That was amazing. <laughs> Someone just gave me a chocolate chip. <laughs> and I smeared it on my face for no reason. And someone gave me a napkin. I'll tell you what, man. I've never been happier to have left the stream recording. And I'm going to stop recording it right now. Tomorrow night, San Francisco, at a venue called The Office, I'll be emceeing a live power hour with Ali Spagnola. She will be in uh, in San Francisco. It's going to happen a day early than what it was that I talked about on the last on last week's episode. It's going to be amazing. It's only five dollars at the door. It's going to be an awesome time. So get your ass up off your couch. Come have a fun time. I'm going to talk and yell and scream, and you guys are going to have a good time, and we'll all laugh.